I'm Dr. Cindy Lam. Welcome in. I'll be demonstrating the top three uses for the modification unit. First, adding minus. Second, thinning the edge. And third, polishing. A modification unit with all the included tools is quite affordable. It's a useful fitting problem solver, making quick changes to troubleshoot and improve patient comfort without waiting for a new lens. Here's what you'll need to get started. You'll need a modification unit, which consists of a motor-driven spindle, metal or plastic bowl, and the accompanying sponge tools. You'll also need some suction cups or greenies, water, and polish. The greenies come with a two-sided holder. Use the concave side to attach the front convex lens surface, the convex side to attach the back concave lens surface. Start with wet greenies and lenses to improve suction. Polish also dries out your hands, so please excuse my dry skin. Modifications can be quick and simple for the right cases. Case number one is simply adding minus to a patient's old lenses so that they can use them as a backup without throwing them away. Most spindles rotate counterclockwise, so you should turn your greenie clockwise as you modify. Add polish and water liberally and frequently. Polish the lens convex side down at the 12 or 6 o'clock position of the sponge, where there is the greatest velocity, not the center of the sponge. To prevent warping, you can cool off your lens by dipping in water. Adding minus can depend on pressure, time, and the type of polish. So check the prescription every 10 to 15 seconds as you gradually flatten the front curvature to add minus. You can add up to a diopter without distorting the optics. Case number two is thinning the edge. Edge awareness is a very common complaint and we can't just tell our patients not to blink. First, use an edge profile analyzer or a shadow scope like this one to determine your lens edge, either sharp, ideal, or blunt. From there, decide how much plastic you'll need to remove from the front or back surface to make it more comfortable. To remove plastic from the F1 surface, place the lens convex side down and angle your greenie 20 degrees from horizontal. To remove plastic from the F2 surface, place the lens concave side down at the center of the flat sponge. Don't forget to recheck the edge as you go. Case number three is polishing. Besides lenses, we polish patients' prosthetic eyes. We recommend every six months to improve wetting and reduce discharge, because artificial tears can't solve everything. Most prosthetic eyes are made from hard acrylic. Simply polish the front surface on the flat sponge, then polish the back surface with the cone-shaped sponge. Feel for any remaining rough areas and repeat. Notice how much smoother the front surface has gotten after polishing. Thoroughly clean with multi-purpose gas permeable lens solution before dispensing. A quick tip, suction onto the lens tightly, unlike what I did on the right, and cover the bowl with your other hand, so when the lens decides to fly away, it stays in the bowl. Other don'ts. Don't polish lenses made from high decay material as they are very soft and susceptible to surface defects. Polishing will also strip plasma treated or hydropeg coated lenses. To satisfy your curiosity, I've done all of the above. These identical scleral lenses are made from high decay optimum infinite material with a hydropeg coating. On the right lens, the condensation highlights the micro scratches from the polishing, not seen otherwise. The lens is also much less wettable, completely repelling the water droplet. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more, I found reading Dr. Bennett and Dr. Henry's chapter on modifying lenses quite helpful. Happy modifying!